This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Forget the frustration of picking commerce platforms when you switch your business to Shopify, the global commerce platform that supercharges your selling wherever you sell. With Shopify, you'll harness the same intuitive features, trusted apps, and powerful analytics used by the world's leading brands. Sign up today for your $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash tech, all lowercase. That's shopify.com slash tech. This episode is brought to you by FX's Shogun, the official podcast. Each week, host Emily Yoshida is joined by the creators, cast, and crew in this exclusive companion podcast. They dive deep into the twists and turns of the plot, go behind the scenes, and explore the real-life history that informed the limited series based on James Clavell's best-selling novel. Search FX's Shogun wherever you listen to podcasts. This episode is brought to you by Bumble. So, you want to find someone you're compatible with, specifically someone who's ready for a serious connection, totally open to having kids in the future, is a tall, rock-climbing Libra, and loves rom-coms with vegan pizzas on Tuesdays just as much as you do. Bumble knows that you know exactly what's right for you. So, whatever it is you're looking for, Bumble's features can help you find it. Date now on Bumble. Hey everybody, welcome to the latest episode of All Too Real 2. Two. My name is Michael Lee Cullen II, and with me, as always, is... Sesame, Max, and Carta. That's a good name. It's very... Thank you. Very, very um, strong. Um, heroic name. It, it's it, like the kind that, you know, you feel like, hey, I can trust this guy. Yeah, Max has a very um, strong kind of, you know, energy to it. And you got Sesame, it's a little bit more feminine, so you kind of have the smoothness a little bit, you know, of like, oh, this is a safe person to be around, you know. But then you got the Max, which is a little bit more like tough, you know, so it's kind of a good combination. Yes. Like Maxim magazine. Wait, no. Well, <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck am I? I don't talking? know. <laughs> anyway, so, um, <laughs> how you doing there, Sesame? You know, I, th- I was doing ben, all right, ben. but then I I hit my head, and oh man, it just hurt real bad. It was almost like you know there was Max headroom, and I just I couldn't get past, and just boom, you know, so. And I felt like I kind of passed out for about 20 minutes, and then I woke up, and then it was like in the future, because I passed out, you know? For like 20 minutes. Huh. Into the future, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> Today on the show, we're covering the hour-long film called Max Headroom, 20 Minutes Into the Future. <laughs> Did you do that on purpose? Yes, sorry. Aww. <laughs> I don't know what that laugh was. Anyway, so... <laughs> so, uh, yes, today we're covering Max Hedger 20 Minutes Into the Future, which was a 60-minute movie um, produced in the United Kingdom um, back in 1985. The cyberpunk television film created by the British company Chrysalis. 
Um, yeah, for uh, Channel Four over there, which is one of their big networks. Um, oh God. yeah, or it's like cool is. they got like the BBC and Channel Four and and then a couple other thing about bobbers over there. Um, <laughs> like we've got ABC and CBS and whatnot. Um, yep. Speaking of which, this show spun off into a TV series that was made for America, for the American Broadcasting Corporation, um, for ABC. A couple of years after this was out, and they basically the pilot of that is basically the this movie reshot with different oh, act, oh. with different actors in most of the parts, except for there's like two holdover actors, Amanda Pays. And Matt Frewer, who plays Matt Frewer, plays uh, Edison Carter and Max Hedrum. And then wow. uh, Fiora Jones is played by Amanda Pace. And uh, those are the only two actors that crossed over to the TV series. TV series included uh, people like Christopher Young and uh, and Jeff Jeffrey Tambor. Oh wow! They like recast a lot of the uh, British because everything and everybody in the Everybody in this movie was British except for Matt Frewer, basically. Yeah. So yeah. He's a Canadian Canadian American actor, which you probably know from like Honey I Shrunk the Kids and uh he was in the T V show Timeless for a little bit. Um he's been in a lot of things. If if you see his face, you know who he is. But he's most famous for being Max Hedrum. Yeah. Which was I, so I, I I was born in the late seventies. I'm giving away my age a little bit here, <laughs> and grew up in the eighties. And Max Headroom was like a phenomenon, eh. like the biggest thing since Jesus Christ. <laughs> Maybe not that big, but you know, pretty close. <laughs> so it was. I remember, yeah, him. You know, as like a really little kid, like Back to the Future Two. You know, because he was in this like a little scene in that. And... Oh, actually, he wasn't in that. That wasn't him. Oh okay. no, they 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 had um they had Max Hedrum like characters, one of Michael Jackson and one of Ronald Reagan, and then of like Khomeini or something. Yeah. Oh, so the real uh, real okay. I, they did. They, ne- they never had Max Hedrum himself, but they had Max Hedrum like oh, okay, okay. characters. You know. Yeah. Well, I remember, I remember from something when I was a kid. You know, very. Yeah. Very early on, because you know, I was, you know, eighty five. I was still like, you know, a baby. But like, I do remember seeing this movie sometime. I don't know, remember where or when, but <clears throat> I do remember it. Especially like the the two guys who are kind of like the street thugs or whatever, like the bustle or whatever. You yeah, know? I remember those two dudes. And uh, <laughs> yeah, but he was like, I mean, I remember just like. Uh, he was like, uh, didn't he? Was he on MTV a lot? Kind of. Sometimes, and... um, he was, but he, uh, he did a lot of commercials. Yeah, like, I do remember. Uh, he was the spokesperson for New Coke. <laughs> yeah. The 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 failed um, reformulation of uh, of yep. of Coca Cola. Catch um, the weight. Yeah, he he was uh he was that he um he had his um. He had his own show on Channel 4 first off after this movie. This movie was basically setting up the backstory of the character who they wanted to right. create. They just wanted to create this character as a um as a like VJ tour sort of host to host music videos. That so, was that was their initial concept. So this came out first though, right? Yeah. Before... Yeah, they wanted okay. to do they wanted yeah. to do something with it. They originally tried to like animate the character like on a computer. Really? But that didn't work. And the way that they actually created this, because there's no there's no computer animation at all in Max Hedrum. Oh, okay. What he is, it's he's it's Matt Frewer with prosthetics on his face and uh and like a plastic like suit that he's wearing. And like you know, like fake hair and prosthetics and stuff to make him look kind of plasticish or like computerish, computerish, in front of a blue screen, and then they just change the background. That's, that's but really it lo- cool. but it looks like uh, something that you would that would come out of a computer. So, 
you know, yeah, I mean, it looks like really Jeffrey. glitchy. Yeah, no, totally. Yeah. They, I, they they, they I would thought... do the glitch. They they would do like glitching later, like you know, like have it be glitchy and stuff. But basically, the yeah, it's just Matt Frewer in makeup. I saw some. Yeah, and um, yeah, there was also um, so we had the TV movie and then we had the TV series, but he also had his own show called the Max Headroom Show, yeah. which was a television series on Channel 4, and then it moved on to, uh, I think it was like Cinemax in the United States, um, or HBO, one of the two. Um, yeah, it was Cinemax, um, where they, uh, where he was basically, it was basically him as a VJ hosting, you know, the latest music videos. Wow. Yeah. Um, it was popular for a couple of years. Um, and then after that, they ended up doing the, television series on abc you know based off as a spinoff of uh, 20 minutes in the future <laughs> so um have you ever heard of the max headroom sing signal hijacking oh god no i've done so much research on that yes <laughs> yes, yes I... yeah so, so so an interesting thing is on um, november 22nd of 1987 an unidentified person wearing a Max Headroom costume carried out a broadcast signal hijacking of two television stations in Chicago. Uh, during each uh, signal interruption, the hijacker speaks with distorted audio and stands before a swiveling, corrugated panel <laughs> to, to mimic the background that he had. Um, he, uh, it, it was like, never it's it's still never to this day been figured out who did it so nobody and yeah, no one ever caught them it's it's like total mystery um that this whole signal jamming thing was like huge in the 80s for like like kind of like anarchists who knew about like you know satellites and shit like that they would do these like you know things like they'd hijack like radio yeah program you know tv obviously yeah, but you know, I've done so much re so much research on this, and and also too, God, one of the times, I I don't think it was the first time I watched the the video. It may have been another time, but I had accidentally taken too much Benadryl because I had mm -hmm. forgotten that I took some earlier, like not even like an hour earlier. Yeah, and so I watched, it and I was like freaking out. Like I I, I bet. Yeah, I was just like, and I, but I couldn't stop. I couldn't look away. Like I was just like, especially like it wasn't just the, it wasn't just the mat. But mm -hmm. for me, it was more of the distorted voice and the weird yeah. thing in the background that was more freaking me out than the actual mask, you know, or whatever. There's um, there's a really good in depth um look at this on the podcast uh, stuff you should know. If you look up that their episode about the Matt's headroom thing. Um, hijacking. They will. It, it. They. They go in really in depth about the whole situation. That's. It's a really good listen. That was like one of the first times I had ever heard about this, yeah. which was like probably about five or six years ago or whenever the episode yeah, came it, out. So yeah, it's an amazing story. It's really fun yeah, to yeah. to look into. Like if you just want to research something that's kind of stupid, but yeah. also like be cool. It's like it's a pretty big deal. Chicago is. Very major city in the United States. Yeah, and they, and... they, they, they interrupted uh, WGN, which was at the time, at the time, it's one of the bigger stations. I mean, it still is one of the bigger stations in Chicago. Also, the PBS affiliate uh, WTTW during a broadcast of Doctor Who. Yeah. So, yeah. Like, I've I've seen that <laughs> that part, too, like the literal clip of, like, the Doctor Who. And it's like, just try to imagine, you know, like, being in 1985, whatever year 80, it was. 87, yeah. 87 and you know sure. this is before youtube's before like weird obscure absurd comedy was like a thing really that was for the most part and you're just watching regular tv at like 10 o'clock at night and all of a sudden this thing shows up for like a full like two minutes or something like that not yeah. quite it was like in like 40 Good. seconds or something and it just goes on and on <laughs> I mean, it's like it's it's like you're tuning into the news, and all of a sudden, uh, Tim and Eric show just appears. Basically, yeah, is what just kind like, of was like, yeah. But it, it's so like, <laughs> well, but it's in, yeah, it's just one of those stories. I, I, 
I've read a lot about too, mm-hmm. like on Reddit and stuff where people have like had theories about they might have an idea of who it could have been. Like, because apparently mm-hmm. there was like this mm-hmm. a group of people that used to live like all like an apartment together, but they were all like these signal jammer type anarchist type mm-hmm. people. And like somehow this other group of like people and like his brother would like tag along and he was like autistic and like, cause like some of the phrases that like this guy in the mask would say, like we're really similar to like what this this guy would say because like yeah like and like like this like this guy would always say like oh before he would like say like go into something like and I think at one point the guy was kept saying like oh you know so it's kind of like a like a a different way of like communicating I guess like and this you know say this guy was like really into like just saying like saying really weird off the cuff things that like didn't really have like any context to like what was going on and like in the video he's talked about like your love is fading and like catch the wave like just kind of like really stuff that didn't really have anything to do with like it, it's an interesting well, the theory. Catch, the catch the wave had to do with max but that's no i know the, yeah, that but, but yeah. like it was just like i like it was like no like devoid of any context of what they were yeah like it was anyway it's, yeah, it's I, a whole pe- pe- i mean it could be anybody from uh like a a hacker group in Chicago or like a former WGN um, employee and stuff like that. They thought maybe a guy that got fired from WGN was doing it uh, as a fuck you. Um, but yeah, who yeah, knows? We, <laughs> but anyway, it's just, there's lots of theories abound and they're all very interesting. Um, but yeah, so far, uh, and there's been people who claim that, Oh, um, they knew that what point, like someone's like spanking him yeah like a fly swatter or something and and like this guy on youtube claimed like oh i knew the woman that was she did the, she was part of the collective right, right. anarchist collective sadly though she passed away in like 2009 it's like you well, can't trust someone on youtube yeah like, who writes a comment like you know but anyway sorry i know we kind of went off a little tangent here but it's it's a really fun fun thing to look into yeah if you want to, I mean, look up the, uh, look it up on, uh, Wikipedia. They've got like actual video links to, uh, to segments from it, like 34 second. <laughs> and, uh, the, 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 uh, they got the whole, the, the WGN one was 34 second intrusion. And then the, uh, WTTW one was, uh, a minute 34. Oh, so, my yeah, God. They, they've got both of them right here on YouTube and on Wikipedia. So, yeah. Yeah. It's just amazing. Um, so yeah, that, that's a little tangent there off of this. Um, but yeah, Max Headroom was, like I said, a cultural phenomenon in the eighties. It was like he was he was at one time as big as like Michael Jackson in the eighties, you know? Yeah. It was like, yeah. Um so yeah, what what is this movie about here? So it's you know, it's the plot's pretty straightforward, even though a lot of stuff happens, but basically and it's like this dude, he's like a journalist and for um a station, I forgot the name of it was a channel four in this show too. Uh, no, it's uh network twenty three. That's right. Yeah. And um he's basically like one of those like hard hitting journalists who like gets to the bottom of things, you know, that kind right, of right. like you know, he goes in the field and he faces danger, like that kind of journalist back in the eighties. That was kind of a big thing. Nowadays, no one really does that anymore. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, back, was... that, back then you had like John Stossel and Geraldo Rivera <laughs> and people like that on 2020 and whatnot doing these type of things. You know, say what you want about either one of those people in the past that, but back then they would kind of like, oh, we're going to find out why, you know, your cereal is poisoning your kids or whatever, you know, <laughs> right. shit like that. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, uh, so that used to be kind mm-hmm. of a thing. So that was his like role. And he was like getting like too close to like the truth of, this um thing because apparently there was like people like spontaneously combusting as they yeah, watched like too much TV and like what what it turned out was that like they have this new technology called blipverts um which like yeah. this teenage kid made up and it basically just sends like thousands of advertisements like into your vision like in like split second basically yeah. And, like, some people who are, like, inactive, so, like, of course, they may, like, fat people, because back then, like, the yeah. young people who were inactive were fat, apparently. But whatever, you know. So, like, you know, they showed one of them, like, explode because it was just, like, too many 
too many like signals all in one, you know, one thing or whatever. And so like the people at like the board, like the, all the TV stations, like, you know, for this particular station, like half of them wanted to kind of just get ahead of the scandal right away and just kind of admit to it. And the other half wanted to cover it up. So then it was like a whole conspiracy about like who was going to win that kind of battle, you know? And um, the kid ends up trying to just kill the guy by like controlling all the rooms and like this, um, I don't know where, where, where like a warehouse or I forgot yeah, where they were. Something like that. Some kind of hotel or something. <laughs> Not a hotel, some kind of building where the dude was trying to yeah. get files or whatever. And so the kid was like, making the elevator go up and then like his his woman on the inside was like she was like trying to help him from her computer and she could tell like there was someone else like fucking around basically you know and so she shoot him down the kid would shoot him up and would just like go back and forth meanwhile there's like these two guys who are kind of like paid muscle i guess yeah they're, well, they're, one of them, they're, they're the like they basically was... remind me of like the human versions of rocksteady and bebop yeah, because you got the one guy, he's a little bit smarter. The yeah. other guy's kind of like the muscle, basically. Yeah. They're like, they're chasing, and like, they're dressed up like your typical 80s cyberpunk villains. Yeah. Like, they just, you know, they look, you know, like, they look like you would expect them to look at that mm -hmm. era of television. By the way, that's like one of my favorite eras of like HBO and Cinemax is these kind of shows. Yeah. You don't really see that kind of shows anymore, you know? No. And, um, I no, mean, no, 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 we don't see dystopian future shows anymore because we're living in no. one. Um, well, I mean, <laughs> just I mean, like you do, but like they, not like this campy. No, like, I know what I, you mean. There's like a nostalgia thing for me about it, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, you hear so things, things like this and Mad Max and um, and uh, you know, like Roger Corman's like knockoffs of that and stuff. You had all these like you know cyberpunk type of things. Yeah. So basically, long story short, he he eventually gets out of the building, but then the kid he gets out, of, he steals one of the guy's motorcycles or moped or whatever, and then the kid um, does something like with one of the gates, like whatever, so like closes in on him, and then he hits his he hits his head, and it says Max Headroom, uh oh, yeah, to hit your line or whatever you call it, yeah, it's, it's it. Max Headroom, um, two point three meters or something. Yeah. And so, and it gets kind of weird because we're led to believe that he died at first. And really? then, and then they're going to basically use like his head to like, um, basically like turn it into like an AI type thing. Yeah. They like, they like scanned his personality and his, and his likeness into this computer. I mean, this, this kid did. Um, yeah. It was like teenage kid. This kid 14. named Bryce, um, or, or Price. Oh, wait, is his name? Um, I think Bryce, it's Bryce. Bryce Lynch. There we go. I was right the first time. Yeah, Bryce Lynch. He's like a he's like a genius like kid. Um, he uh, yeah, he, he basically it's it's like the first deep fake in a way, but like not quite as effective. But this 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 movie has a lot to say about things that are actually going on in our world right now with AI and yeah. whatnot. So it's interesting. So it basically creates like an artificial intelligence version of um of Edison Carter who decides that his name is Max Hedrum because that's the last thing he saw. So. Exactly. Yeah. Oh my God. It's just, it's just wild. And, it, and so, yeah. So meanwhile, the kid's doing that. And like the one, of the guys who wanted to kind of get ahead of the scandal, he's like, tells him to drop the project, you know, doesn't want anything to do with that, but the kid keeps working on it anyway. And then, you know, the guy turned out that he didn't really die. He escaped the whatever place they took his body to. And then, so you got half the movie. It's him just trying to, to run away Somehow and Somehow he still had his camera, too. I didn't get that. Oh, that's right. He still has his camera with him. And then, um, yeah. I don't know. It was weird. And then he's trying to get in contact, you know, with the, I forgot her name, but she was like a journalist, too, I think. Yeah. Or they... she worked for one of the companies. Yeah, Amanda Pays uh, plays Theora Jones. Yeah, that's the, yeah, like his woman on the inside. Yeah, and yeah, she's part of the company too, but she's more like on like the computer, like the technological side of things, like you know. And so she's helping him out, 
And then you want to talk about the weird third plot of like the people living in the trailer, like that. Yeah, they, gets... so 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 the 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 two uh, henchmen guys steal the the computer that has Max inside of it, and um, at one point there's like these this kind of like older punk couple. Or at least the dude's older. I don't know about the the woman. She's like yeah, maybe, he looks maybe, pretty. Old. Yeah, yeah. He he looks like you know like like grandpa punk. You know, it's like the <laughs> the old dude at the Sex Pistols concert that shouldn't be there, sort of thing. And um, <laughs> the um, he's a uh, he's there, and then um, they that well, they, they live in like this trailer or whatever, and I guess they're kind of like I don't know, like doing like some kind of pirate television broadcast that they call big time um and uh they end up using max as their host they the 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 hench people stole the thing and basically we're gonna sell the computer to them and then they 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 took it anyways you know without paying for it and got the <laughs> got got max you know to be their new uh their new TV star, which isn't too far off. I'm pretty sure we're going to have TV stars. I mean, you probably already do that are just completely AI. Um, oh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, we probably. I mean, we 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 have AI narrating YouTube videos and stuff now, so it's pretty much the same thing. It's yeah, I'll get there. Yeah, and he's like out and shit, but then he starts becoming more intuitive and like yeah. almost like a pers personality of its own is starting to like manifest you know yeah like he has a sense of humor and everything uh yeah because this like tv show i mean this tv station was just like not really tiny like cable access type of you know show yeah i think it was like, like pirate television basically like it oh was, that what it was yeah okay. yeah yeah and then at one point they okay. figure it out because they like the I guess like when they monitor like how many people are watching a particular channel back then, you know, all of a sudden this channel just like skyrockets in viewership like within like a hour, you know, or whatever. But yeah, the 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 um the old dude, by the way, his name is Blank Reg. <laughs> I just found that interesting. I just that's yeah. yeah. <laughs> that is interesting. Yeah, so I'm yeah. So yeah, they they basically then um then Carter ends up like exposing the whole thing at the end. Doesn't yeah, he? because yeah. they're um trying to kill him or something. They like the whole thing uh becomes like yeah exposed. Uh, like I said, like the plot's pretty straightforward, but there's a lot going on in between you yeah, know because i think this stuff. whole thing was just made more as a presentation for a possible idea for a tv series in the future yeah which they ended up making a couple years later like, but yeah it was like a pilot basically for this journalist dude but it's weird because the journalist is still alive and but now he's got this ai version of him who's also doing shit so it's like yeah i don't know how they work with you know how they kind of um deal with that you know yeah, the, the, here's the premise of the TV series, in case you're interested. Um, in the future, an oligarchy of television networks rules the world. Um, even the government functions primarily as a puppet of the network executives, serving yeah. mainly to pass laws such as banning off switches on televisions. Wow. So you can't turn your television off. That protect oh. and consolidate the network's power. Television Ow. technology has advanced to the point that viewers' uh, physical movements and thoughts can be monitored through their television sets. Almost yeah. all non-television technology has been discontinued or destroyed. The only real uh, check on the power of the network is Edison Carter, a crusading investigative journalist who regularly exposes the unethical practices of his own employer and the team of allies of allies both inside and outside of the system who assist him in getting his reports to air and protecting him from the forces that wish to silence or kill him. Wow. Yeah. I'm not sure how Max Hedrum fits into that story. 
Yeah, that's kind of... That's I the mean, name of the show. <laughs> I... Uh, unless maybe <laughs> Oaks banned for all of this. I don't... That's... Yeah. Oh, yeah. It says here on this, so it says, despite being the titular character, uh, Max sparsely appeared on the show while he occasionally played a significant part in a plot, sometimes by traveling through networks to gain information or by revealing secrets about Carter that Carter himself would not divulge. His most frequent role was as comic relief, delivering brief quips in reaction to certain events or giving a humorous soliloquy at the end of an episode. That's... Yeah. It's probably because... They wanted to write like a dystopian show, or like a cyberpunk thing or whatever, and then they kind of just want to throw him in there to kind yeah. of base get more viewers. Basically, yeah, I guess but... the, the pilot is basically a remake of the movie with new okay. a- with, with new actors. Yeah, yeah. I, I like the movie though. I, I do I... too, but I mean, it basically, they just wanted you know because they recast the roles with American actors because they probably had to. So yeah. But yeah. yeah, but again, it's hard to it's hard to um, to really emphasize, like kind of like how you said of like how much of a phenomenon this guy, his character was in the eighties. Like he yeah. was everywhere. Like, I mean, even even when I was really like, I don't really remember too much of that my my part of my life. But like, I remember seeing him all the time with like commercials. Sometimes he was on MTV, like doing a little bit or whatever. I mean, it was just like just all the time. Like it was. I mean, I, I I remember having like cups from McDonald's with his face on it. Yeah, and I, stuff I, I like that when got... I, when I was a kid and and other things too. Like you know, seeing him everywhere. Like you would, his picture would be on things that you. I mean, t shirts and um, posters and you know everything. So yeah, who knows? Maybe you know he'll because sure. I'm pretty good at like you know. I hate to use the phrase because it makes me cringe. "Quote trend forecasting," because I hate that phrase so much. But I'm usually pretty good at that stuff. So it's like usually when I start to, you know, get into something or notice something, it's usually not far off before that thing starts to become popular. So who knows? Maybe we'll start seeing like a Max Headroom type revival, or at least a character similar to him. You know, with that same kind of well, graphics or whatever. Um, what was that? I just saw this. Um, doo-dee-dee. there was a uh, where is he? Uh, there is right. Um, on July 29th of 2022, AMC announced a series reboot with Matt Thrower as Max. Okay, so I was a year off, but <laughs> well, no, it hasn't come out yet. It's it's still oh, it's I still know. Well, it's, we announced it a year ago, so I was like, yeah, I but it's it's, it's 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 still in development, so it hasn't premiered yet. So you're 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 there. So I'm, I'm good to go. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, there is no uh, other information about it, so it could it could have been dead on arrival too on that. So who knows? oh man, but yeah, I'd like to see them try something like even if they reboot the concept of the TV series or did something completely different, it'd just be interesting to see what the modern take on this would be because we have things like Max Hedrum now, you know, and stuff. I mean, this is, and at, at the time, like the, the whole world of like, it, we were living in a world where we had like Terminator, like a year before Max premiered. Um, you had, yeah, there's a lot of stuff yeah, like you, that. You had that. You, even, even in your toy aisles, you had like Teddy Ruxpin, you know, a teddy bear that would talk to you and shit. So, you know? Yeah, and then, then, then Child's Play came out. You know, you got all these things where it's like these computerized things are kind of like either uh, something cool for kids or something that's going to kill you, right? Demonic, or, yeah, or something. You we'll know, it's like, yeah. It was it was like the the fear of the fear of technology and you know robots taking over. But now it's more like currently it's like AI is sort of the the big fear now. You know, you're going to have artificial intelligence and you know you've got robots packaging things at amazon you've got you know chat gpt you know writing things for people even though it's not it's just regurgitation it's not real writing yet but it's like i've been trying to train my ai um well that was not mine but the whatever yeah. it is uh 
I forgot the name of it, but the the one that you the link that you share with me, Chat GPT, um, yeah. And I've been like trying to like get get it to write like about like the same character. Like <laughs> for me, it's been Negan from The Walking Dead because they got a new show yeah. coming out. I don't even really like The Walking Dead that much, even though I rewatched the entire series recently. <laughs> I just yeah. wanted to watch season eleven. I wanted to get refreshed, so I just watched the whole series. Took me a few months to do it. I'm like, yeah, it's okay. But like, so I just started like getting like to write like really absurd things about the character Negan, like how Negan gets transformed into Abed's mind and community, and then like suddenly he appears, and then like he basically like has like a a wrestle control for the group with Jeff because they both want to be like the leader of the group, and so they're like both being sarcastic with each other and shit like that. And then, like, I'll just write other things. Like, write a scene where, um, like, uh, Negan doesn't kill Glenn, but then, like, they, like, become both baseball players. It's just like, weird shit. But then, like, it's I've noticed that it's starting to kind of, like, understand the absurdity. So, like, now it just sort of leans into it. So, I'm, like, I'm, like training this thing. Like, you know, yeah, uh, it's just weird, but um, of course, now it's gonna like come back to me, and then now it's gonna start training me, and so now I'm gonna become like one with the machine. So I kind of open myself up to that now. So you know, yes, maybe by next time I'll call myself Sesame Machine and Carta or something like that. I mean, right now, there's no way for you to know if I'm actually me. Maybe it's this, true. maybe this is like a deep fake AI version of me. Hosting it could this be show. AI voice. Yeah. Um, yes. They, they've done that. I've, 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 uh, somebody created a, uh, like an episode of Joe Rogan's podcast with a fake Joe Rogan. Oh my God. And I mean, it, so it, it actually sounded smarter than he is, but, um, the, uh, well, I mean, that... <laughs> I mean that's not very difficult yeah. to do, but yeah. And you can usually tell though, there's little differences here and there. Yeah, there, there'll be like little variations in the speech pattern. I've seen things yeah. where, where people even try to do AI like uh, physical versions of themselves for YouTube videos, and a lot of times the way it is right now, they can't really move their hands much. Yeah, and so so they're kind of just standing still, and their face is moving and talking to you. But you know, a lot of times talking heads on YouTube videos, that's all there is anyway, so it wouldn't matter. Yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. It's just, it's, it's, uh, but man, like, in the next few years, or even, even faster than that, but that really, definitely within the next five years, it's gonna, this is gonna cause so much chaos in politics. Like, it's, it's gonna be like horrible. Yeah, I, I, I mean, you don't know. Somebody's gonna make a fake, uh, Trump or Biden or somebody and put them on TV or some other politician or something. Of, of like a smaller country or something that we don't know as well and it'll fake people and then all of a sudden we're fighting with like a third world country that we've never heard of right know? yeah and like with trump and stuff like you know sure. like every time he says or does something really stupid he's just gonna say oh it's ai so but so it's like sure. so now sure. i mean like his followers now believe anything he says anyways and but yeah. now it's definitely it'd be the case where yeah, if I mean, anyone that, that can be harnessed for any it could be harnessed for good or bad it just yeah it's what, just like yeah it's, so it's like anytime like anything bad happens they could just say oh that was ai it wasn't really me it was a deep fake i mean he was already saying that back in 2020 during the pandemic in the summer yeah. of 20 he was saying things were deep fake so it's like it's just it's gonna be yeah, so I mean, okay it, it, it's like it's like that that jordan peele um deep fake of obama that they did like and this was like probably about five or ten years ago oh yeah and it's not even that great but i remember when it first came out it kind of was like amazing like i was like i almost believed that was obama but uh it's gotten so much better since then even so you know you could do you know you can make you know you you could i mean i i don't want to See this, but you can make pornography with Obama having sex with Trump or something. You know what I mean? Oh, I'm, I'm just saying that you have that oh, ability yeah. now, almost. You know, so it's like creepy. It's 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 <laughs> gonna be so interesting, and they're gonna start making laws based Perfect. on this stuff. Yeah, where I think they've already done laws now about like making pornography of like a celebrity. Well, I know or, that they're they're um, you know Alyssa Milano fought in court year for years because people would paste her photo on other women's bodies 
yeah and put them online and she had to get those all taken down and uh fight in court to basically anybody that did that would owe her a bunch of money right yeah um and i think it well, started it's... some precedence on that thing so but i mean it's hard to say what will happen but i mean you can i mean but the, by the time things get into the courtroom when you're trying to do something who knows what'll happen you know i mean it you yeah know, because because i mean most of the time it's, it's like they always say that the first thing you hear or see is what you believe whether it's true or not yeah so like you know somebody comes out and you know the first thing you hear is that you know drinking coca-cola is going to solve covid if that's the first yeah. thing you hear you're gonna believe it even you're after like, everybody tells you that it's bullshit you know yeah, like yeah, you know, it's got acid, so maybe the acid like yeah. way virus. Yeah, I guess that kind of makes sense. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's you know it's wild. Coca, I like how you mentioned Coca Cola yeah. because he was yeah. That's why the... I was trying to tie it in. But yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's good. Yes. I mean, I did. I, I I take all of my advice now. My scientific advice, just letting you know that you know earlier this week on um on Facebook. I posted how the, the week that we record this, I don't know when this is going to air, but the week that we record this, um, the, the air quality was really bad because of the wildfires in Canada. And um, I was posting something about how it's, you know, I don't want to go out for my walk because I can barely breathe when I go outside. And somebody tried to tell me that, oh, it's probably just as bad in your house. Right. Like, which well, which not... is totally not scientifically proven. But this guy was, you know, I looked him up and the only thing I could really find out about him is that he's a he's he's a professional donut icer at Duncan. You know, which I'm pretty sure that, you know, at uh, you know, most uh scientific universities that that's the highest level you can attain after your like your your master's degree and all that stuff, you get donut icer. Um yeah. You've had to do that for like five years as like an apprentice. Mm -hmm. And then, and hey, you know, I love donuts, so I that mm -hmm. shit up, bro. But like, yeah, you know, because, you know on, like, Amer America runs on Duncan and conspiracy theories. Yes, yes, it does. I yes. mean, unironically, yes, it's true, <laughs> unfortunately. Because <laughs> everyone loves their Duncan and they also love conspiracy theories. So yep. uh, that's actually not even a joke. That's no. Nope. <laughs> Sometimes, but, you know, you just sit there and you're drinking your Dunkin' coffee and you're coming up with new conspiracy theories. Yep. Yep. You know, you, yep. you, you look at how flat the donut is and then you realize, wait, the earth is flat too. <laughs> yeah. It's, 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 you're just looking at your eclair and you're like, that's what the earth's shaped like. Eclair. <laughs> you're looking at your, your earth's clair. Yeah. They got to make it like earth clair. I don't know. And then. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. Anyways, we're going off on a tangent, but um, yeah, I, I really liked this uh, this movie. It was good. Yeah, me too. It was it, it brought back some memories when I watched it, probably when I was a kid or something. But uh, it's, it's I would recommend it if anyone wants the recommendation. Sure, let's let's go with that. Yeah, one of the writers, George Stone. I'm reading some trivia here. Disagreed with Max appearing in what would go on to become a long long running series of Coca Cola adverts believing that they turned the character into a sh short life product Meaning yeah that, which which it probably did because you know you, you can't um you know it's like but then again you know you do have some advertisement characters that have been around for years like the gecko geico the geico gecko or whatever and you know things like that or flow from you know basically any of your insurance company um mascots yeah you um, got those <laughs> yeah you, you got flow who's yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, she's like an actual comedian and actress and really good, but you know she's yeah. kind of no. But she's really annoying as Flo. I'm just <laughs> like you know she's probably making bang. Oh, I know clothes. she's. I I would <laughs> do it too. Um, she's been doing those for like what over ten years, almost fifteen at this point. I mean, probably longer than that. Yeah, um, you know, I know it's since even before like 2010, I think. And um, it's just crazy. Uh, but. Yeah, got... Stephanie Courtney is her name. Okay, and, yeah. Uh, since 2008, she's been playing the character. Okay, yeah. Wow, that's insane. Yeah, um, you don't really see a character that often, like as a that long running of a commercial, like like 15 years. Like that's 
And according to this, she has a net worth of $6 million. I figured. Yeah. I figured so, yeah. like that. Uh, but uh, who knows how true that is? That's just on a Google search. Yeah, those sites so, sometimes. Because I remember one time when we went, to, we went to see um, uh, your friend's band, and there was he was opening up for another band that was like much bigger, like a jam band. Yeah, and it, I forgot the name of Stephen Keller or something like that. And I went just randomly, just went to look up his net worth, and it said like sixty million dollars. I'm like, this guy is, he's not famous. Yeah. Like, I mean, like. Like people who know him know him and they go to his concert and stuff, but like he's not like a world sure. renowned like Beyonce or you know Yeah. And like there's no way he's making sixty million dollars just from going on tour and playing some jam band music and selling some merchandise. Yeah, like, like I, I'm friends like, on I'm friends on social media with Devin Sawa, the actor. Yeah. And he posted this thing from this website that said his net worth. And he's like, Yeah, I'd really like to see where all that money is. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's like, just like there's no way he, you know, he has that much money or whatever. It like, was. I wish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure like his idle hands money have kind of yeah. been spent. Out, you know, or I mean, he, he's still movies. he's still acting. He's got you know he's 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 well off. He said, but he's like I don't have that much money. So, you know, so right. It's just like I mean, like cause... by the way, another recommendation: Idle Hands. Oh Check yeah, that definitely. Movie. That's such a great movie. We'll have to cover it's... it in a future episode. Yeah, um, I think we talked about it before. We just never yeah. did it, but. Uh, yeah, totally. That's a good one. But yeah, uh, but they, they had him at like a level of like almost like Tom Cruise sort of money. And oh my just god! Like, yeah, no. no, you know, so. <laughs> unless he has like a bunch of like mm-hmm. secret businesses all over, like yeah, you know, private businesses. Yeah. Like. <laughs> but anyways, um, any other final thoughts about uh, Max Headroom? Twenty minutes into the future. No, just um, just check it out if you if you're into that kind of cyberpunk stuff. I. I, I really like this because, you know, I, I remember watching it when I was a kid and it, you know, it brought back a lot of those sort of just like that kind of just, uh, it's, it's very eighties. You can tell by the era of like, oh, yeah. this is, it's so good though. Um, I, I would, I would totally check it out. Yeah. I think, um, <clears throat> I think, um, it's very much going to be, uh, something that you should watch and you'd enjoy when you watch it. Um, and it, it says a lot about our current society too, I think in a lot of ways, which a lot of things pe- you, we will look back on from the eighties and you'd just be like, wow, that was really kind of predictive programming. Um, not really, but you know, no, <laughs> not really. Exactly, man. They, yeah. they were trying the Simpsons were trying yeah. to tell us about, uh, 9-11, I, bro. So or, I, uh, I hate all of those things that the when, when anything happens in the world and people are like, the Simpsons predicted it. The Simpsons have, like, billions of episodes. Of course they have something that's tangentially connected to what right. happened in, in right now, but it's not them predicting. It's just like, oh, we had an episode with a submarine, so, you know, the submarine... means that we... Yeah, we predicted yeah, we, we predicted uh, the predicted. Titan people dying. No, you didn't. You, you know, it's right. just like yeah. also too, is that you know, life and social like society and politics are so mm-hmm. absurd that it's really not that hard to like predict something stupid happening because we're we're just pretty much ruled by idiots. So yeah, it's it's not that difficult to even quote see into the future because it's like of course something like this would happen. Of course, Trump would become president. Why not? Like, and, 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 you know, and, and not to mention just the idea that that art and life are so interconnected that it's like you can't tell if something's imitating life or imitating art. You know, it's like, yeah, exactly. It's it's just the way it is. Anyways, yeah. um, hope you folks enjoyed this episode. Um, you know, one thing you can do, you know, before the uh, the artificial intelligence overlords take over the world, you can uh, yeah. be sure to um, subscribe to us on any of your uh, favorite uh, um any of your favorite uh podcast platforms um one of one of which is going to be going bye bye stitcher is no longer going to exist come on yeah what the hell yeah it's my favorite one and it's no longer going to exist so um you know check us out everywhere else um we're there still um you know and we're also on youtube we also have uh facebook and tiktok and the zimzam and the doogie daga and the uh, <laughs> those are things right uh, I mean, there probably will be within the next few years, I guess. See, see I, I'm, I'm, probably... I'm predicting it. Um, <laughs> yeah, there you go. You're. Pre- I'm, I'm just as yeah. powerful as Matt Groening. Um, yes. Yeah, yes. So um, the. Uh... <laughs> so, anyways, um, yeah, check out our T Public. 
and um you know check out our patreon you know really if you want to help the show um help us survive yeah um, in this in this uh, in this post-apocalyptic world that we live in yeah we, and, we need um we need to pay for the blip birds yes yeah you know, so yes i used to take a lot of blip birds and then i went to a 12-step program and then i'm no longer hooked on blip birds it's good yeah that's really good so anyways um just remember that max headroom loves you hey maybe and um i love you and sesame loves you and until okay. next time bye bye thanks for listening to all too real two podcast a cullen park production produced and edited by michael e cullen the second Music by Matthew Haas. Subscribe and share the show. Visit us at CullenPark.com.